15% there. Graffiti artists, supporters of Kenny Elisson, the pint-sized French climber. And this is where it's really hard. Impey's done his turn. I think that's Simon Yates now. I think that might have been Albacini, actually, who was uh, taking over there at the front in terms of the pace setting. So presumably just one of the Yates twins is up there in second place at the moment. Not sure where the other one is, and we'll have to get a closer look to see exactly what this order. It looks like Albacini star on the front. Couple mm. of riders from Cannondale in third and fourth. Trying to find where Rodriguez is. There. He's down there in fifth, and then Valverde, of course, very well placed in around about seventh. Tim Wellens there as well. So all the big names that we talked about are coming to the fore just at the right time. Roach and Martin, the two Irishmen there as well. Left hand side, you can just see Barker Mollema too. Kralswijk not far away. And Luis Leon Sanchez in about 15th position in the light blue. Pantano on his wheel. Roman Kreuziger in about 20th position, the Czech national champion. Battle of attrition, 9.4 k's to go. Yeah, of course, because of the, the motorbike incident last year, it's no surprise that we're having to, to hover in. That's Simon Yates, second wheel, as it's Rigoberto Uran who launches the first serious attack. So Uran is attacking, and Simon Yates follows. Wow, that looked easy the way Simon went across to Rigoberto then, didn't it? Not going to be able to leave their moves too long, the pure climbers on this race, because after the top of the climb here, it's pretty much descent until 3Ks to go. So if you want to win this race as a pure climber, you're going to need to make your effort pretty quickly now. 9.2Ks. Still a big hairpin to the left-hand side coming up. Looks like Greg Van, Van Abermart about to uh, come towards the front, but uh, Simon Yates now putting the pressure on at the front, and he's got a clear gap already. He's floating away from the rest of the field right now. Sorry, big, big dig put in by Simon Yates. Victorious for the first time in his professional career after coming back for that four-month suspension just the other day. And Purito Rodriguez tried to rebound. Valverde not too far behind as well. And look at this. This is so, so steep. And remember, this comes after 210 kilometers of racing already. Joaquim Rodriguez. It says Adam Yates. They take a rain jack. I'm pretty sure I saw number eight on that bike when it went across before, but we'll see. Yes, they do have the same style. Adam Yates, of course, the defending champion. And again, the passion on the side of the road in full evidence. A look around from Rodriguez. Yates behind. Dick's quick step trying to make their move as well. And the peloton being blown apart. Joaquim Rodriguez, who has never won this race, He's come back, I think it's the 12th attempt, a 12th and final attempt, and he's pulling away. Yeah, metre by metre, Rodriguez is starting to put a gap into Yates just behind, and then group behind that, I think it was Brambila from Etix Quickstep. No sign of Dan Martin just at this point in time, maybe not on best day, the Irishman. We've also got Valverde leading the chase group behind, which is whittled down to six or seven riders. No more Callendale riders there. Oh, there is one there at the back. Is that Davide Formolo, I think? It is the small, wiry frame of Davide Formolo. Meantime, Joaquim Purito Rodriguez, the Catalan rider from Katusha, riding at his final season, 12th attempt to try and win this race. He's been second before in 20, 2005. He's been third twice, 2011, 2014. Is this his moment? He's being chased down, though. And behind, they look to be gaining on him. 8.5 k's to go. He is less than a kilometre from the top of this climb. Now, those hard ramps, 22% up here. Yeah, if the graphic's right there, we've still got a few hundred metres still to go before we get to the top. It's Balka Mollimer of Team Trek Segafredo who's actually doing the work in the group behind, gradually making his way across to Joachim Rodriguez, but unfortunately for everyone else, Alejandro Valverde is also there, and it looks like Tony Galapan's also made this move. Four riders now drawing clear at the front of this race. And all four riders coming out of the Tour de France with three weeks of hard racing in their legs. There is that big left-hand hairpin. They're almost at the top of the road now. 
Joaquim Rodriguez about to be caught. Molimer in the white and black, the Dutchman reading for the United States team. There's Brambilla swinging from left to right. Nicholas Roach as well for Team Sky there, the Irish champion. It is in, in fact Tony Gallopin there at the top. So over the top of the final climb of the day. And the descent is approaching. One big favourite from that particular group. But it might not be the end of it as far as those guys are concerned. Well, there's A Yates there in the chase group. <laughs> Well, it looks like uh, Balcom Oliver has decided that he wants to try and press on, of course, of all of these riders. He's probably got the uh, slowest sprint when it comes to the final couple of hundred metres, so he's decided to press on here. Obviously not noted for his descending skills either, as we saw in the Tour de France, and uh, unkindly almost, his sports director made that plain in the press the following day after he lost all hope of finishing on the podium. But if those three behind start to look at each other too long, we might find that Balcom Olimer has got a gap that's too big to close. Still 7.7 k's to go, though. Balcom Olimer's just lacking a couple of big victories in his career. He's got a lot of very good placements on general classification. I think he's only had six wins in his career. Not too many particularly prestigious ones, but he's always been there or thereabouts. Five seconds now for Molimer. Rodriguez looking around at Valverde. Then where have we seen this before? World <laughs> Championships on numerous occasions. Yeah, there's a big history between those two Spanish riders, isn't there? And the, you have to understand, Rodriguez not really wanting to take Valverde towards the line. Uh, Valverde will be the rider that's going to be asked to do a little bit more of the work, a little bit like a Pete Sagan situation, really, when Sagan finds himself in a group of climbers. None of them want to really work with him because they know that he's going to beat them in a sprint to the line. Valverde not quite as fast, of course, as Sagan at the finish, especially these days, but of these four, you'd have to say he would be favourite if they came together, although Galapin as well. Pretty quick in a finish. Molimer with less than seven kilometers to go away on his own. Eight seconds, nine seconds now as an advantage. Remember, three years since the most prestigious win of his career. Stage 17 of the Vuelta España. It was one not too far away from here. It was in the north of Spain, in Burgos. On the day, beat Edvald Barsenhagen and Max Ricciese to the victory. Chase on with Brambilla. Yates is there as well. And this is Molimer. Trying to get as aero as possible. Pedalling for dear life. All of that three-week effort. Heartbreak for him as he fell quite sharply down the standings and off the podium with two stages to go in the Tour de France. This could be some sort of compensation for that. Yeah, it won't completely make up for the disappointment there, will it? But if he did take today's win, it would be one of the biggest wins in his career. As he rightly points out, Rob, he's an incredibly consistent rider in the Grand Tours and other races too, but he hasn't had too many notable big victories to his name, and this would be definitely one of them if he managed to cling on. Ten seconds the gap, it's gradually going up. Twelve seconds is what we are being told now, and the chase behind is not that concerted at the moment. Well, Tony Gallopin, the French rider in the red and black, racing for the Belgian team Lotto Sudal in the middle, with a big green M on his back. It's Movistar's Alejandro Valverde, the Spaniard, and his compatriot. Just behind Joaquim Rodriguez. Five kilometres to go to the line then for Balcom Olimer. Again, just doesn't get that line completely right as he goes round that corner. Now he's got about two kilometres now of descending before they'll come back down to roughly sea level, and it's pretty flat all the way to the finish line there. They'll know the final few kilometres, of course, of having already done it earlier on in the state in the race today. But uh, he's doing very, very well, Balcomer, on a 10 seconds. He's holding that gap on a descent, which is not his strong point. And he just needs them to look around at each other a couple more times once they get down to the flat, and this one could be in the bag for the Dutchman. So, selection made on the climb being gained upon on the descent. Still four and a half kilometers to ride though for Balcom Olimer. 10 seconds is the advantage. Again, tries to get as aero as possible. If you have a nervous disposition, look away now with him leaning over that top tube and all the, the potholes you can see on the descent there. Dutch cycling has had so many near misses this year. Giro d'Italia with Krausweg. Tour de France with this man. Needs a big win. Hasn't won a World Tour race since that Welter stage either. The only other World Tour victory was a stage of the Tour of Poland the year before that. Back in the days when he was at Rabobank. Now riding for Trek Segafredo and if uh, Alberto Contador is indeed on the way to join the team then he could be bumped down in the pecking order in terms of leadership. 
time to get the wins in the bag and the status moving up. So the descending is done. Three and a half kilometers. 3Ks to go, in fact, now for Barco Mollema. Just goes under the kite. Six seconds, though, and they're gaining on him. Four, four seconds. Dan Lloyd's the man with the real timing equipment alongside me. He says the race organisers have it wrong. Just four seconds when they went through that battle. Yeah, three kilometres to go. I started the clock when Mollema went, so they'll very much have him in their sights right now. And you can see the three riders. He's just hovering in front there. They need to fully commit now if they want to bring him back, though. Well... Look around there from Alejandro Valverde, looking to equal that record of three wins set by Marino Lejarreta, and he's making his move. Two and a half kilometres to go. Alejandro Valverde just pushing on at the front. He knows that history could be in the making here. Balco Molima still with just a few seconds of a gap. Four at the last count. It says 11 now. Yeah, I think they hesitated, didn't they? They just came down that descent faster than Balka Mollema was able to do so and closed it to four or five seconds with three Ks to go. But just after that, they started to look at each other and that's allowed the Dutchman to increase his advantage once again. Rodriguez just sat on the back, he refusing to work with his two companions there at this point in time. They're probably getting slightly frustrated at that. Well, of course, you might be joining us for the first time watching this type of race. Joaquim Rodriguez has nowhere near as much punch in his sprint as Alejandro Valverde and Tony Gallopin. It's logical that he should make them do more work here to have any sort of chance to the line. Gallopin looks around again, remember a former winner. Alejandro Valverde having won it twice. Rodriguez has never won this race and is about to retire from the sport. This is Balco Molina, the Dutchman. Radio hanging out. Jersey unzipped, doesn't want to listen to anything else. This is his race, and he's going to do it his own way. There's no shortage of encouragement, as you can see. One and a half Ks now, and it's still Gallopin who's riding. <gasps> Gallopin might have done a bit much if this does come back together. Yeah, I'm not sure that it's going to at the moment. It's not a pretty style, is it, from Balka Molina, but it certainly seems to be quite effective for him today, as it was during most of the Tour de France as well. 13 seconds now being shown as the gap between this man and those three riders behind you will surely be joined by a few more riders if they continue to slow up it looks to me like this trek segafredo rider has got this well nine years as a professional now he's just completed his 10th grand tour finished 11th in the tour de france and barco Molima, almost ready to turn 30 years of age he's looking for the biggest one day win in his career about to hit the seafront Big left turn here, has he done enough? Some of the crowd certainly think so, he has the finish line in sight. Five and a half hours again, such tough, tough racing. Trying to get any sort of advantage he can off that motorbike into the finale. They can't see him behind, surely this is his race now. Yeah, this is now a sealed deal, I think, as far as it's Balka Mollema is concerned. What a win for him, he just went over the top of that climb on the false flat, which came immediately afterwards, and I think the two riders just behind, looking at each other, Galapan and Valverde Rodriguez, already refusing to do any work on the front, and it allowed this man a very, very small advantage. He increased it over the top. So here it is, Trek Segafredo to get the win. So much disappointment at the Tour de France for Balka Molima. From 2nd to 11th in the space of just one crash. Here, though, he's over the line first, and the winner of the 36th Classic at San Sebastian is Balka Molima. Chasing group finally gets itself a bit more organised. Corito Rodriguez not going to sprint for the podium. It's going to be Galapa in second place. And Alejandro Valverde with yet another podium on the Classic at San Sebastian. A fourth place and a wave finally to the crowd. It's a race he'll never win now, Corito Rodriguez. A fourth place finish. A very good ride from him in the meantime behind. We're seeing the sprint for the places led out by BMC. Van Avermaet there ahead of Brambilla of Etics Quick. So I think Dries Devenins did manage to get himself just inside the top ten, the I Am Cycling rider who we talked about earlier. But today was all about this man. He needs to win on his own, and that's exactly what he managed to do today. Hats off to Balka Molima. Seventh win of his career, the first since the Japan Cup. A big one. And just desserts for a very, 